Once again, good evening, everyone. Today we have with us Dr. Indrajit Bairagya, a man with extraordinary insights in various fields of economics. Currently, he works as an associate professor at the Institute for Social and Economic Change, Bangalore. He has an excellent personality with inspiring presentation skills. ISIC is the largest among the 27 institutions supported by Indian Council of Social Science Research. As such, we are lucky to have him here on this eve to handle today's session on extraction and use of NSSO data for social science research. We wholeheartedly welcome you, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, it's indeed a great honor and privilege for me uh, to be here. And I'm really thankful to the organizer, especially Dr. Biju for giving me this opportunity. So without uh, wasting much time, let me share the screen. Is my screen visible, Bijo? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So can, this PowerPoint wait, is also uh, one or two minutes. One or two minutes can we wait because the participants yeah, are no joining. Problem. The time is right now six months. No problem. No problem. You just let me know when should I start. But my PowerPoint is clearly visible, no? No, no. The PowerPoint is not at open, sir. The, uh, the folder file is only visible. Only file. PowerPoint you have to open. I have opened it just now. But it is not visible. Just okay. uh, we can see the file, uh, the folder and file, and as so for I said. Okay. The PowerPoint okay. is not at open. Okay. 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 Then okay. let me do one thing. Yeah, yeah, now it is visible, sir. Now it's visible, no? Okay, thank you. Please let me know huh? when should I start? Yeah, sure, sure. So our friend Bino is also joining the program. Yeah, I've seen yeah. his name. Bino Joy, can you unmute your mic and say something? Indrajit sir is here. Yes, sir. I can hear. Yeah. How are you, Bino? Oh, fine, sir. Fine. I am yeah, eagerly yeah. watching. Yeah, I, I have seen your name. Oh, okay, sir. I am very happy. Okay, sir. Thank you. Say, so, sir, we can start. Okay, thank you. See, uh, we all are researchers and we do empirical research mostly. And when we do empirical research, so data set, this data, sometimes it can be quantitative, qualitative data, but mostly quantitative data is an integral part of our research. And we struggle a lot to collect data. Sometimes we confine ourselves to one region or few regions with number of sample sites. Then panelists ask questions, referees ask questions, whether our sampling method we have followed, that is scientific sampling, whether the number of sample we followed, that is 
uh, adequate or well representative for our population or not? Many question comes related to the data itself. But if someone collects the data and provide us, they could, if someone collects data across uh, uh, the different regions of our country, is a big country covering every state, literally every state and many districts, and they provide the data for us, then how happy we will be. We must be very happy that someone else has collected the data and they are providing the data for some five lakhs uh, individual, five lakhs enterprise, six lakh enterprise, and they have um, followed some scientific technique to collect the data. So no one will question the data collection methodology. No one will uh, question even the adequacy in the number of sampling because the sample size is so large, it is few lakhs uh, of data sets. So National Sample Survey Organization, or uh, national uh, presently it is National Sample Survey Office, they conduct such surveys, these large-scale surveys throughout our uh, this country and uh, in different, different topics because they uh, we will discuss in the next few slides and they provide a ready-made data. When I say ready-made, it is not fully ready for use you have to do little bit of a work with their data sets to make it in usable format for your purpose. So we are going to uh, discuss uh, today that how to make use this large um, uh, unit level data, that five lakh, six lakh data provided by national sample survey organizations with some example how that when it, it uh, appears in publication, how does it look, how to present the data in presentable format, and then to come up with that presentable format, what steps you need to follow in the process of extraction and use of that large uh, data sets. So this next one and a half hour, we are going to discuss that. So before going uh, to this, our uh, exercise, what I will do, uh, I will just give a glimpse of NSSO itself in the next five to seven minutes so that you will come to know what is NSSO, what is their work, then we will come to our business. But we have uh, several ministries out of which this Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation is the ministry responsible for data uh, collection and um, they provide uh, some data which are used both for official statistics as well as for research purposes. So MOSPI has two wings. One is a central statistical office. Another is a national sample survey office. Central statistical office mostly provides data related to the macroeconomy, like national income, the price level, the GDP, so they provide data, they do not collect data. They also use, they also analyze the data, then they come up with some macro level uh, figure uh, for our uh, economy. And National Sample Survey Organization conducts surveys at the grassroots level uh, based on their scientific uh, technique and they have their huge manpower as well. So MOSPI has two wings, statistics wing and program implementation wing. Program implementation is certainly their targeted program to reduce poverty, this thing, that thing. So statistics wing include this national sample survey offices. And national sample survey uh, organization uh, carried out this uh, carried uh, large scale national level surveys for capturing several important variables pertaining to Indian economy. Some of you might be working with employment and unemployment. I have seen one of the sub theme of this research. The core the research, the core, uh, core topic of this, this entire workshop is finance. So the National Sample Survey Office conduct studies on this data and investment survey of the individuals. Then uh, they conduct surveys on this consumption expenditure of the households. 
then education and health status of the household. These are their regular surveys. In addition to that, they conduct surveys related to the enterprises, but unorganized enterprises. When I say enterprises, because organized enterprise survey is conducted by annual survey of industries on a regular basis every year. So they don't repeat the same survey. They just conduct the residual part that is the unorganized enterprises which are not covered in this annual survey of statistics but the size of this survey again is huge they cover both unorganized service sector as well as unorganized manufacturing sector so this nsso the started its operation in way back 1950 itself uh, with the objective to conduct surveys on various socioeconomic aspects and this directorate of NSSO was assigned the job of conducting the field work, whereas the other work that sampling design, this uh, schedule of inquiries, writing instruction, training of the field work, processing data and writing report, or these activities were given initially to Indian Statistical Institute, very highly uh, reputed uh, institute in uh, India. But in 1970, they have changed their structure directorate of NSSO was reorganized and all aspects of its work were brought under single government organization called National Sample Survey Organization, NSSO. And after formation of this National Statistical Commission in 2005, the governing council of NSSO was dissolved and it was taken over by National Statistical Council. So over time, the structure is little bit changed, but the objective remains same. So what is this NSSO, the NSC and National Sample Survey today? This NSSO functions under overall guidance of this National Statistical Commission and the working group constituted by it for each round of the socioeconomic survey. So National Statistical Commission uh, decides that this time NSSO conducts this survey, so short-term and long-term program, and what methodology they need to uh, adopt. NSS uh, prepare the sampling design, concepts, uh, definition, questionnaire, because every survey has its different questionnaire. We will discuss that, and every questionnaire is some 10 to 12 page length questionnaire. So 5 lakh individuals data, 6 lakh individuals data with some kind of 200 variables, 100 variables. It's a huge data set for research. So NSC approves this sample design, concepts, definition, questionnaire, estimation procedure, then tabulation plan. They approve the methodology also. They approve even after that survey report also, because recently we had debate of this employment unemployment survey, whether unemployment figures are correct or not, because they need to approve it, approve it then the, the report get published and data get published. So these are the regular surveys in, in regular basis. Uh, the, the, this consumer expenditure and employment unemployment, these surveys con, uh, conducted twice in a decade. That means it's quinquennial. Now, every five years, we have this uh, data, consumer expenditure and uh, employment unemployment. Whereas this uh, social consumption, health, education, this is also quinquennial, but sometimes some, some kind of irregularities are there. So in for a few decades, we may get one in decade also. Unorganized manufacturing and service sector, this survey is also quinquennial on regular basis. It started from... Uh, the, the, the manufacturing survey started long back 1994-95. Uh, this unorganized service sector survey start, was started in 2001-2. So it also has been continued for every five years gap. And then a data and investment survey and land and livestock holding. This survey is conducted once in a decade. Uh, it, uh, it has been started in 1993. Then it came in 2003, and the latest is available for 2013. And then they conduct some open round because uh, sometimes they may feel that the, some other topics are important. For example, tourism is important this time. So the, their NSC decides and they go for that open round survey. 
So these are, they have this uh, scope for up and down based on the necessity of that particular time. So subject covered in the recent past, I have given in 17, 18, we have both this health and education expenditure survey. In 2013, the latest we have data and investment survey, situation assessment survey. In 2012, we have this housing condition survey. 2011-12, I have mentioned specifically employment, unemployment, and household consumer expenditure because there is a little bit change in the pattern of employment, unemployment after 2011-12, after the formation of new government. So they initially stopped this survey, but they have conducted this employment, unemployment in different form, keeping the questionnaire uh, more or less same with some modification that uh, periodic labor force survey they have introduced in 2017-18. And we have that unorganized, uh, unincorporated non-agricultural enterprises, manufacturing and services. The latest round is, round is available for 2015-16. So you got a, a, a brief uh, a glimpse about this uh, service. It based on your interest that which area uh, it is related to your uh, research, so you can explore that data sets. So, uh, in terms of uh, the sampling technique, uh, for every round, this NHSO goes for this multi stage stratified random sampling. The first stage units are always census villages in rural sector and urban uh, frame survey blocks in urban sector. So ultimate stage units are household in the rural and urban sector. So it is it has multi-state scientific sampling. And they conduct most of these large surveys. They divide one year into four phases. So the, this four phase is extremely important to understand. As a researcher, you need to understand because if you deal with some surveys, which has are very much related to the peak season and link season, lean season. Then in peak season, possibly the, that data will reveal a brighter picture. In lean season, sample collected will, will not reveal that kind of picture. But some of the surveys are uh, equally uh, representative across all the sub rounds throughout the year. So that can be clapped that those data, they provide the data after clubbing all the four rounds, but they mention the information about these four rounds so that a researcher, if the, if a researcher is interested to take out one or two uh, sub rounds separately, they can do and they can conduct the analysis. And so that the, the, this sub rounds data available for uh, this, this sample villages and, and blocks. So, so special feature, special feature of this NSSO is NSSO questionnaire have been subjected to revision from time to time in relation to the changes taking place in the current economic uh, situation. And for instance, employment unemployment survey has introduced some new and relevant questions on the subject of informal sector in the year 99-2000. And in addition, NSSO has introduced different new surveys relevant to the contemporary times also. And the last but not the least, most important point you should remember as a researcher, those who have already used NSSO or large scale data, you might be aware of this fact, those who have not used, they should take a note that NSSO provides information on multiplier. They, have, they create one variable called multiplier. Based on that, you can create weight. And every uh, the, uh, cases, every sample, you can give weight and you can generate the population features, that is parameters based on the statistic. You have five lakh sample, but based on the five lakh sample, you can come up with an estimation for your 130 crore uh, population in India. So it is possible because they adjust their sampling importance with multiplier. And this multiplier variable is exceedingly uh, essential to have analysis at the national level. Even if we want to represent the ratio, the percentage figures, still we go for using this multiplier, this weight to get the parameters. So parameters are uh, possible, uh, parameters can be estimated 
based on the statistic in NSSO data. So NSSO data has certain limitations. I only had written uh, this a few years back. It was published in 2016, but I had presented in the, their conference in 2014. Some of the limitations are not relevant today uh, because initially data were used to come in different, different formats. We had, it was segregated by states. So we had to merge every states then we had to march uh, each blocks. So the, now those kind of complications are not there. When I have done my PhDs a decade uh, and half back that time, uh, kind of uh, these things used to come, but now this, this uh, problem is no more. So the data is at least in much, much better uh, fashion it, it appears so that researcher, it is, it is kind of user friendly today, the data we have. So uh, it has a, a, a little other limitations that sometimes they do not maintain that year gap because quinquennial, I said that it is quinquennial every five years gap data appears. Sometimes they, they delay and they appear, the they, uh, data appear one year later. So for to have a kind of this, this uh, with the balanced panel data, with the, first of all, this is not panel, but at least if we can create pseudo panel, then at the state level or district level, then also these year gaps are different. And the most important limitations of NSSO data, you should remember as a researcher, this is not a panel data. Even if a data round is repeated, for example, employment, unemployment, south base are repeated in every five years, but we do not know who are the individuals. So there is no individual identification code so that you can match that, that this man was doing something in 2000 and this man, the same man, what he is doing in 2020. So 20 years back, what that man is doing, you cannot check, but ASI data that is kind of uh, panel data, but that is for formal enterprise. But these uh, NSSO surveys are not panel surveys. So these are uh, repetitive individual uh, uh, surveys, only cross-section, repetitive con uh, cross-section surveys, but you can pull the data together to see the macro changes over time. Or you can create pseudo panel as Nobel laureate Agnes Deaton said, that how to create pseudo panel a little bit. You have to come up a little higher level from the individual level to the district level. So district remains same and well representative data in the district. So you can create a figure for the district and you can create a panel for the every five years gap for that district. Yes, and so is with the state. So uh, this is the, the major limitations uh, that, that, that with NSSO data, but even despite having these limitations, NSSO data is widely useful. It is uh, for our uh, research, especially empirical uh, research. So having said that, now we know we have an idea about the uh, what is NSSO data. We are going to give an example as Dr. Biju said initially uh, that uh, said you give some uh, idea about the publication because the, how to come up with a good publication. So here I am going to explain my two publications quickly, each with some uh, 10, 12 minutes so that you will come to know that how NSSO data can be used and can be framed in publishable format to come up with a publication in very good journals. So one paper I am going to present and both the papers are based on NSSO data of two different rounds. One is um, the, uh, the first paper I am going to present on why is unemployment higher among the educated? The paper was published in 2018 in economic and political weekly. And soon after publication of this paper, it was um, uh, quoted in few newspaper also because educated unemployment was a booming topic. So you will come to know how even this is mostly descriptive paper. I have little bit econometric analysis in this paper towards end. So how even descriptive analysis can be interesting using uh, NSSO data. 
and the second paper i am going to discuss it is published it is a little edigoras paper in terms of are you telling anything okay so as a second paper i am going to discuss it got published in uh, journal of asian economics purposefully i have taken this paper because most of you are interested in finance but i don't do not work with macro finance certainly because i work with labor and education related issues but here i have a paper which has little bit relevance with your micro finance so impact of credit accessibility on the earnings of self employed businesses in india and the paper got published in an elsevier journal journal of asian economics it has impact factor 1.7 so we i am going to discuss these two papers then i will show the raw data of nsso uh, one round and how to extract the data how to merge the data i i always um, prefer to provide hands on exercises but here i am unable to see your face and your computer so what i will here i will demonstrate the steps you take a note if in case you face any problem in future don't hesitate to contact me so let me proceed the paper visible bijo kind uh, i yes, sir yes, sir the slide is visible right now not slide i have i have opened the paper that why is unemployment higher among the educated is it visible no sir no paper is not visible yeah okay not visible okay okay give me just a uh, one minute sure sir take your own time now is it visible yeah it's well, ah is it visible sir perfect yes. why is is an employment higher okay. yeah so this is the paper i published in uh, 2018 and at the some way media uh, the academia as well as this polity uh, both are interested about the issues so uh, what i am going to say i will uh, give you an idea how to frame up because most of you are a researcher and some of you are faculty members as well so uh, how to frame a paper based on empirical analysis and then we will come to this data so here i have started with a quote Uh, the given by means are related to this unemployment what is that code that educated workers enjoy at least three basic advantages over less educated workers in the labor market higher wages greater upward mobility in income and occupation greater employment stability and that is quite obvious because that's why there is lots of investment in this education and human capital that after this investment that this uh, people will get certain benefits in the in the job market but ultimately whether it is um, getting the reaching to this level so i have brought some of the discussions based on international literature even in us also uh, the what is happening with this educated people in india then the the, the analysis starts with Uh, that some uh, international figure but let me tell you here is the cracks you have to motivate your issue because this is the expectation but this is not happening that educated people are not higher in all the three parameters in every places in some places exceptions also happen and why does this exception take place that is the question so you have to motivate your issue and as soon after motivation you have to uh, mention your objective very clearly so here our objective i have mentioned this article focuses on the problem of educated unemployment in india and attempts to explore whether the different socio economic and regional factors responsible for educated unemployment differ uh, for from uneducated unemployment so here only i am mentioning use the analysis is done using a large and nationally representative sample uh, of individual data provided by nsso for the year 1983 to 
2011-12. So our my analysis starts. Still, I have not gone to this NSSO data. My analysis starts with a glimpse of what is happening. This education unemployment rate across different educational categories and across different educational levels world over, different countries world over. So here we have seen a pattern. You see, for developed country, if I take example Australia, that you see as education increases. Here, the first uh, row uh, of uh, this table represents different education level: pre-primary, lower secondary, pre-primary and primary, then lower secondary, upper secondary, post-secondary. So this unemployment rate decreases as education level increases. This is you uh, now you can. Uh, you should not concentrate on the last column because this is the average all levels of education. So uh, as education increases, unemployment rate decreases for developed countries. But when it comes to these developing countries, you see uh, for Brazil, initially it has increased 0 0.4.2, 5.5, 6.1. Then it has come down at the extremely high level in the tertiary level, but initially it, it has gone up. If I take the example of Chile, that with the education level increase, this unemployment rate also increases. You see the surprising, the contradictory figure, but what means are said that educated people are in a better position to get job. But what data is showing here world over? That no, it is not true every country. In, even in some countries, that educated people, this unemployment rate increases with the increase of education level. Educated people are in even in much vulnerable position in the job market than the uneducated people. So what is the story of India? If it is true for India, why is it happening? So here I have started discussion with India. So as an empirical researcher, when you move for any discussion, you have to be very particular about the parameter of estimation. When I say, uh, now I have moved to this unemployment rate because this is the data I have, uh, the, the table I have created based on uh, NSSO data. So estimation is very much dependent the defin on the definition I follow. So you have to be very particular of the indicator, the, the definition of every indicator. So here unemployment rate, so how did I measure unemployment rate? So before coming to anything, before raising this question by a uh, reviewer or anyone else, it, it is our responsibility to put that, that it, that, that the definition of unemployment rate itself. So it, I have started like this in India, in India, NSSO provides the definitional distinction between proportion unemployed and unemployed rate. So researchers are not confused according uh, Accordingly, most of the developing countries are high and no, not, not this one. Yeah, this one. According to them, proportion unemployed is defined as the number of persons or percent days unemployed per 1000 persons or percent days. Whereas unemployment rate is defined as the number of persons or percent days unemployed per 1000 persons or percent days in the labor force. So the difference is very clear here that one, this proportion unemployed is number of persons or percent days uh, per thousand uh, population. Here my de denominator is the population, but here my denominator is the labor force when I say that unemployment day. So those who voluntarily excluded from the labor force means someone is studying, someone is uh, doing, uh, is not interested in the job market fulfilling domestic duties or child care responsibilities they they are not in the labor force but someone they are voluntarily unemployed so they are excluded i'm telling out of the total labor force those who want to have a job but not able to get a job so for the unemployment rate is measured in that ratio so uh, and then again Again, this unemployment rate with the definition also can be measured based on three definitions because NSSO provides unemployment, unemployment measures based on weekly status, daily status, and usual status. Usual status, uh, somewhere the magnitude of unemployed uh, for uh, the period of uh, 365 days for annual basis. 
whereas weekly status provide the, that per week and this daily status is the daily basis. So here we have used usual status. Within usual status also we have principal status and subsidiary status. So here I have clearly mentioned in the table itself that I have used unemployment rate based on the usual principal status category. It's fantastic. Now I have across education level. If I see for India, this Unemployment rate, this table, table two, uh, portrays a, a picture that unemployment rate increases with the increase of the education level. Last two rows are the average only. It is graduation and above. Last, last row is at the secondary of, uh, and above, and this is graduation and above. So you now just forget about the last row because it is second class, secondary and above, just to give one uh, picture that if someone uh, is interested to compare this second graduate and above and secondary and above but here you see that unemployment rate increases 6 to 14 14 to 25 again 33 again 56 again 97 so see uh, and it is marginally decreased it is 84 so because this diploma and certificate course accounts for this technically educated people account for the highest unemployment uh, rate uh, 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 the highest unemployment rate so this unemployment rate increases with the increase of the education level but if we compare over time over time you see at the lower level also for not illiterate it is more or less stagnant but illiterate and above you can see that from 22 to 14 then 71 to 25 so unemployment rate has come down for every level but this trend even till today unemployment rate is higher for the educated people as compared to the uneducated people so when you present a table it should have a purpose of comparison so comparison across rows comparison across column and again uh, the, this data has been bifurcated using the same the now the entire paper is based on that now this uh, NSSO data only. And this first two table is based on four rounds of NSSO data. And every round has some kind of four lakh to five lakh individuals data. So here, it, these differences, we have uh, made the same, this edu picture of edu uh, this relationship between education and unemployment rate uh, uh, by rural and urban. In urban areas, we could see that Unemployment rate is higher. You see the non illiterate, illiterate people. Unemployment rate is higher for rural as compared in urban as compared to rural. Again, for the literate and primary, urban is higher. Urban is higher for middle, secondary, higher secondary, but it has come down after that. You see diploma and a graduate. What does it mean? You see the rural areas, there are some scope for low profile informal jobs or NREG activities for lower educated or uneducated people. But when it comes to this educated people, their participation, scope for participation in the job market in the rural areas is much lower as compared to the urban areas. So again, from this comparison, you have to draw some inferences. It is possible to draw excellent inferences based uh, using this NSSO data. So I am proceeding to the, to present my next uh, figure. I am uh, I have presented using four rounds of data that it, uh, unemployment rate is higher for the uneducated for the educated people than uneducated people. You might be thinking, oh, then uneducated people are much happier than educated people. Then why are we studying? Why are we breaking our head to get education? Yes. So answer is there in this figure itself. Unemployment is lower for uneducated, but why are they working? Are they working? Are they happy? Are they working in a very sophisticated job in the labor market? Let us see. And now onwards, we have concentrated only one, the latest round of NSSO data, that time latest, that 2000, because PLFS data was not released that time. So 2011-12 data was the latest data. So based on that data sets, we have just made a comparison between educated and uneducated. And here you can see this 
educated it represents uh, this uh, gray color and this black one is the dark dark color is is this one uh, uneducated so darker one is uh, the darker one represents uneducated lighter one is representing educated you see uneducated people are uh, employed but hired they are mostly in own account works they are uh, in um, helper in household and they are mostly in casual wage labor in another type of work but they when i say the regular salary job you can see that educated represents larger uh, size as compared to the uneducated so uneducated people are in the job market but they are with vulnerable informal jobs like own account worker or helper in the household enterprise or some kind of low paid casual work so but uh, what inference i can draw educated people either in the more in the regular salaried job or they prefer to be in the unemployed category here i have tried to link with the existing literature existing theory that this raises the question whether enhancement uh, of of educational capabilities always improve the choice bundle and the freedom to choose what do we know that from the capability theory it's anyone saying anything participants please mute your mic sir you can continue sir oh okay. thank you so here see you have to uh, relate with the theory that see we know the famous theory capability human capability that if human capability is enhanced through some interventions of education or health then their choice bundle uh, improves they, they their freedom to choose it, it, it improves but here we can see that the given the structure of our society that educated people do not join uh, the, the, they hesitate to join in this low profile informal job so here uh, this this it questions on the on the on the education this capability theory itself that sometimes even the given structure it may restricts uh, it may restricts uh, your your um, uh, choice bundle so it need not necessarily that enhancement of capability will will increase your choice bundle because educated people are restricting themselves only in this this high profile jobs because that is the structure that is the because here individuals are identified based on their education based on their work unlike some developed countries or other places so here then we have tried to see this educated unemployment uh, story by uh, different age cohorts and we can see this from here the table for that both educated and uneducated unemployment for younger age group is uh, means if i say this this unemployment rate you see that younger age group is higher as compared to the older age group in unemployed uneducated also you see 3.9 as compared to the older age group 0.4 and 0.3 but where do this educate this younger people work initially they you see they mostly work in helper in household enterprises and they work in casual uh, wage labor but as age grows they move to, towards better settlement towards own account worker also improves and then the regular salary improves a lot from 33 to 38 and again 47 and but this casual work it comes down even this helping in the household enterprises that also comes down so again this raises the question or related to this basic questions of unemployment so is unemployment fictional or is permanent or there is the ease of this waiting time after education, the youth are investing substantial time to find a job. So uh, the, is this our uh, labor market structure like that, that compels youth to wait for quite some time to get a job? So it, it, it raises uh, several questions. But one initiative from government side is that to enhance this, this employment 
that the for uh, both educated and unemployed you based on skill development and here the skill development this we have just tried to uh, conduct an analysis of educate this unemployment rate this different types of work status among these uh, different types of technically educated sir, sir, enough, sir? yes yes yeah. please sir, can you explain uh, something about the data mining and uh, uh, data customization for this particular topic i mean i i will go i will go i will go suddenly i okay. i have raw data i will show i am just giving them the picture then my yeah. next half an hour i will just show how to extract the data and come up with these figures uh, okay. come up with such type of things that is the part of second half of my lecture so let us uh, the, 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 the understand that the data can be presented in in, in this this kind of uh, this kind of manner so this is the form if they know and then they have a target no i have to reach i have to analyze my data to call, to come to that level so here so across different types of this this uh, technical education level even with this this technical education level this unemployment uh, rate it exists so that means by it, uh, itself this technical education or vocational training by itself uh, does, does not necessarily guarantee employment even after having this technical education and vocational training people remain unemployed in the in the in the in the job market so what additional policies should be so what we have even done for this across their enrollment in different employment exchanges just to see with the same data sets even we have uh, tried to link with this information asymmetry and such and matching problem in the job market whether this in employment exchanges reduces that such and matching problem because to to uh, establishing a link between this employer and employees so here but still after registering uh, after registering a large number of people uh, remain unemployed so effectiveness of this system also question so then again we have that uh, as i said we have data across state state is a variable there so we can club the state and we can uh, uh, segregate the state there so here uh, because a, a 35 state if you put a picture of 35 state, it will look very uh, clumsy picture. It, it would be very difficult to come up with a conclusion from that, come up with an inference from that particular figure. So here, what we have uh, done, we have clad the states first by three categories, developed, developing, and underdeveloped states, because they're based on their human development indices. And we have seen their, this, uh, that for developed, developing, and underdeveloped uh, states, the unemployment rate. And surprisingly, we have seen in the developed states, unemployment rate for educated people is much higher as compared to the un underdeveloped and developing states. Why is it happening? We had to search for explanation. Some way we have given some explanation that in developed states means they are better in their social sector and education development. So they have the large size of of, of, of uh, educated people as compared to the developing. So again, we have clapped the state because that we have uh, the, some way related to the supply of educated people. So what will be the demand for educated people? Again, we have clapped the state using the same variable that state. And then we have linked the data uh, that then we have just computed uneducated unemployment across this 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 uh, means uh, this unemployment rate across different education level and we see that high industrial state uh, represents uh, you see this uh, this is the high high industrial state except this diploma courses this always in uh, uh, this this graduate and above we can see that high unemployment rate in high industrial state is lower as compared to this medium and lower industrial state so what does it mean that the, even even there is a substantial percentage of unemployment. So the, the the issue is here that this demand demand is certainly a problem. There is lack of industrialization that creates the demand for worker. At the same time, educated people do not want to work in the low profile jobs. They are searching for the high profile uh, the, 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 the formal jobs only. But we do not have sufficient number of formal jobs to accommodate all the, in, the educated people in the 
uh, labor market. So uh, the, we have done some kind of econometric analysis because we have all variables in NSSO data. This table, uh, the, the, we have age, age of the individual, we have household size, we have gender, we have their marital status, we have their religion, their caste, their location, every information we have. And you know to run an, a rigorous econometric analysis, you need to control your, uh, your uh, the degression equation with several uh, uh, important uh, good control variables. So we have this control covariates and we have estimated. So our conclusion is more or less uh, in the similar line. I'm not going to the conclusion, but you have uh, uh, now got one idea about how to make use of NSSO data to come up with a presentable format. So I have another paper, but I will not spend much time in that paper. I will just uh, be very I will I will spend uh, the three to four minutes in the in the in the next paper. Then we will go uh, to this our hands-on exercise. Okay, sir. Break, sir. Yes. So this paper is visible. Yes. So this paper is somewhere related to this. This I have shown this paper. Otherwise, I could not have uh, shown so because your interest is, is not visible, sir. It's not visible. Sorry, it's sorry for the interruption, sir. The paper is not visible. It's not visible. Okay, let me share again. Is it visible now? No, sir. It's, it's visible. It's visible, no? Perfect, sir. Visible. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Now it's visible. Yeah. So the purpose of giving this paper, uh, because you already have idea based on my previous paper, that how to make use NSSO data and come up with some presentable and interesting uh, fashion. But here, I, it is just linked to this some way microfinance. That's why I have uh, given this data because we, this data, this paper is based on another survey of NSSO. It is based on unorganized enterprise survey. An unorganized enterprise survey is uh, they define some kind of own account worker and the inter uh, entrepreneurship. So here we have taken this, we have defined what is self-employment and then we have a variable there whether these enterprises are taking credit or not. So it is very much kind of econometric uh, uh, analysis based. We have used some kind of rigorous uh, 2SLS model. Even within 2SLS, we have done kind of experimentation a little bit, but the picture uh, you can even this but this the first figure is based on this our previous data what we have shown that employment unemployment you can come up with a very beautiful picture that oh yes in this uh, the entire using that weight and everything my labor force is distributed in this this that 30 percent of them are self-employed one account worker one percent self-employed employer and 18 percent self-employed helper so in my economy, 49%, so about half of the labor force is in self-employment to some extent. So it's the important, it shows the importance of self-employment. And then, then how many are getting credit, very less number of getting credit, some descriptively, what is their earnings, this thing, that things. Then coming up with that rigorous analysis, what are the determinants to receive credit? Who are getting credit? There we have used uh, some kind of, uh, um, this uh, instrumental variable uh, technique. So we had some instrument. I am not going into the details. If you are interested, you just read the paper. But here, bank branches in part district and then proportion of informal uh, borrower. So we have used and what is the relationship with that instrument and uh, what is the importance of age of the enterprise. And then it's not age of, age of the individual, it is age of the business itself. And then the asset owned by the, the, the owner, the, with the location of the owner, even the owner, owner's demographic features, their gender, their social groups. So how important these are, even their, their knowledge in, in, in accessing uh, technology, even their, their social capital, their network, how these are important to get a credit from formal 
as well as from informal sources separately we have performed and then we have uh, uh, approximated the predicted probabilities and estimated ultimately the impact of credit access to credit on this uh, this earnings of self employed businesses using two sls model so access to earning has positive and significant impact across different specification when we do different specification we show the robustness in the relationship even if we include few variable even if we we exclude few variable but the relationships remain same relationship between access to credit and this earning of the self employed individuals remain positive and significant so this kind of shows the robustness of the relationship we have even shows the robustness with the ols results also so when this access to credit is again bifurcated by access to formal credit and access to informal credit then what is the relationship again we get the positive and significant relationship for both the credit with the earnings of the self employed individual fantastic so when we have uh, the, the come up with such type of um, um, inferences based on rigorous analysis with a scientifically collected data no one questions on the data people sometimes question on the methodology if you are very much clear on the methodology then you have to concentrate on the inference itself so one headache is gone because my data sets people do not ask much question because data is collected scientifically so here after drawing getting the results you have to draw with some policy implications what we have done for this paper so i have just given some idea how to make use of the paper so first few minutes i have spent what is nsso and second what how nsso estimation appears in reputed publishable format so how now i am going to uh, give you some idea about the steps you know nsso you know the uh, last step so first step and last step i have given so how to come up to this first step to last step that is your second step the process of extraction and use of the data i am going to explain that in next 30 to 40 minutes 30 to 35 minutes okay let me share let me open uh, the trial just wait. Dr. Biju, will you kindly confirm whether it is visible or not? So no, it's uh, not visible. The, uh, my window is not visible. So only the dark. Only the dark. Is... Okay, let me let me stop and then redo it. Now, yeah, sir. Not uh, the window is visible, but uh, nothing is. Yeah, it is coming dark only. It is coming yeah. dark. Only. Yeah, just just one minute there. How about now? Is it better? So, uh, so now uh, a folder containing branding software and surveys. Exactly. exactly. I wanted you to see this one only. It has come? Yeah. OK. That's it. Fantastic. So here you see this NSSO data when you 
when you uh, get uh, uh, NSSO data file, you will have this this folder in the new format. New format NSSO is introduced very recently in last uh, four five years only, and there uh, you will get this. Sorry, so this this uh, you will get these folders. So here, if you click this survey uh, and then uh, data, so uh, this window will appear. So is it visible, Bijo? Uh, that uh, uh, reports uh, supporting documents and NSS so sixty six. Yeah. This folder it's visible supporting documents. Everything is yeah. Fantastic. And if you get this red icon. Just besides this NSSO 66 round schedule 10 employment and unemployment, I have taken NSSO uh, 66 round data of employment and unemployment for the year 2019 for today's uh, this uh, hands on exercise. If you get this red icon, then you need to assume that the data is in Nestar format. Otherwise, if this red icon is not there, you have to go back and you have to install the next data here in the folder itself. You have this auto run pro. You have to click there. You have to get this this Nestor file. So we uh, we have this this no here Nestor Explorer is also there. You click and you get this sorry Nestor Explorer. You will uh, install this Nestor data Nestor uh, software. Now, I already have this installed Nestor, so let me click there what this, this Nestor is, is, is showing. Is it visible, the Nestor file? Yes, sir, it's visible. What is their left side? That document description, metadata presentation, then study description. Sir, now, it now it is not visible. Can you share it again? Because we cannot see any anything. In register, uh, there is a technical error. Sir has left the meeting. Please be wait. Uh, Dr. Indrajit will join right now. Delegates, kindly wait. Our resource person is facing some difficulties. Please do wait. By the time, we would remind you that tomorrow we are having a conference from morning 9 o'clock to evening 5 o'clock. I request all the participants to join exactly by 9 o'clock and all those who are doing your presentations, uh, be prepared. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, sir, for such a wonderful workshop. We really learned a lot from you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the comment. So by the time audience uh, Erica to say something, you can say that. Any comments, uh, any any requirement from our part? Yeah, sir. So, sir, you are muted, sir. Sir, we cannot hear. Please unmute. Yeah. Can you can you? For a phone coach. Okay, sir. Can you yes, can you share yes. it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Please. I am doing. It. So it's visible, no? That document yeah, description, visible. metadata. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Visible. When you, yeah. are, when you have installed this Nestor software, you are well in the data file. 
and from the data file itself you will get an idea what is the data all about so metadata who has prepared the data then the study description everything you will get data and again once data sets before extraction only you will come to know how many blocks are there that block one two three four five here i have nine block again within every block it is that some some blocks are divided into one two three like that so here in a nine block of the at the at the aggregate level so what is there in every block before extraction only you will come to know these are the variables in my block one two that round number this one that one then uh, weight survey what is there in block two household characteristics what uh, what are these data all about household characteristics here you will see the household size you will see the religion you will get the social group you will get the land owned by the by the household so you will get the information and the most surprising again the if if i if i go to this another um, uh, block that demographic profile that here for example uh, sex I, I, I have this male and female, what is the representative of male and female in the data. Before analysis only, you just click on the variable, you will get the descriptive frequencies, that percentage and the total number in the below of this, this uh, table. That my, uh, here, uh, this data is represented by 48.6% of female and 51.4% of male. So you can see that every block, how many variables are there, it's a huge number of variables, but before extraction itself, you can have some idea about every variable, what are the variables and what is the, their picture, uh, the figure, what is the percentage you will come to know now is your second responsibility to extract the block you may extract all block together you have, you have to go to this click on file then export a data set i am clicking here export i'll export yeah export all data sets i have clicked here you see uh, this window appears so when this window appeared uh, here, you can extract this export format. Dr. Bijou, is this visible, that export data set, one small window? Visible, visible. visible. Yeah. Fantastic. So you see it, how, how many formats that, that data can be extracted. It starts with SPSS, you can extract in a Stata. Uh, so you can extract in SPSS, Stata, and SAS as well. So you see the data, it's based on even the, the, the purpose you are, you know, you are expert in SPSS. So you export uh, this, export the data in SPSS. If you are expert in Stata, you uh, export the data in Stata. So, but you have to mention here itself that export format. I am mentioning here SPSS. So I will start exploring with SPSS. So I have put SPSS where my file will be saved. I have given desktop, this one, and then create a subfolder within that with the name of this one. Now, every blocks are selected. If I go for extraction of this, this block right now, extraction process itself will take some kind of 15 to 20 minutes. So what I am going to do, I'm not going to, I just, I am clicking some the, the three, three. The, the, I am clicking just four blocks here uh, of our interest. That household characteristics and then the demographic particulars of the household and their work status at this principal activity and subsidiary economic activity status. So all the household level features and then their demographic features and then their usual principle their work status and this thing so i am going to click uh, okay here if i click okay it will take some five minutes time so i am not going to click okay i have already extracted data so this is the process to get the extracted data so this this point is clear to you so once, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, fantastic. Yes, so once you click OK, you will get these four data files. Your four separate data files will appear in your uh, the specific folder you mentioned and in the format of SPSS. Fantastic. So let me close this and uh, Nestor. Sir, uh, sir, excuse me, sir. Yes. 
Sir, can you repeat the uh, starting process, please? Uh, just uh, what uh, sources we will get? Uh, that is what uh, we got NSO uh, database. But uh, just uh, could you please kind enough uh, just start for two minutes? Because where we'll start? Uh, what is the starting point? Means where will you get the data? Where will you yes. get this NSSO data itself? Yes, yes sir. Okay. Just repeat okay. the process one. Okay. Okay. Just add, let me share again. Start with the beginning so that it will be confident. Yeah, yeah. It, it is it is written there itself. I said when you are in the in the nester file, you can you can come to know what is the data all about, who prepares the data, how to get the data. So here the access authority, data access. Data is collected by NSSO of that MOSP. So they have the price for every data set. So I am not advertising anything. So this is the for NSSO price, but this is and for individual researcher institute or students, they need to procure the unit level data. That was the format earlier. But let me tell you some good news. Now, uh, this, um, uh, some of the data sets are freely available in the Mospi website itself, that mospi.gov.in. But the data is in is in some notepad format. You have to do little bit of work to extract, but freely available some of the rounds. But earlier, uh, the, we had to purchase this data. But in addition to that, some of the uh, our libraries, libraries like in ICSS are data services there. No, throughout our country. So ICSR, that is online platform to provide data. ICSR only has created. So they, they extract the data in SPSS and Stata format, individual, individual file, and then they provide. But they provide individual file only. And now we are coming to know how to use. So sir, are you clear? With Are you happy with the answer? Yes sir. yes, sir. I got the point. That means it's a paid uh, kind of thing. But we Some can get something on free. But, uh, yeah. Some places it is freely available. Yes. and But mostly you have to purchase, you have to procure that data set. But it is but for students. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, is... sir, can you write the name of the uh, website in which we can get the free data set? It is written here itself, sir. Achoo. Must be. Must be. Okay. You see, must be dot okay. 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 So well, let me go to this this um, few more explanations here. Yeah. So uh, he, this folder, in addition to this nester uh, the, the the software, in addition. In addition to this Nestor software, we have reports and uh, supporting uh, documents. We have reports and supporting documents here. Reports means using the data itself, NSSO come up with some macro estimation and inferences. So it is kind of some about uh, 100, 120 pages of this, this report. So uh, if you click on the report, you will get to know about the macro figure. So macro figure, even without extracting data, sometimes we use, sometimes professor, students, they quote the data, NSSO have, uh, given this figure because they don't need to explore much their issues are different so but for supplementary document they have used this one so th this information is available now the most important thing is along with data we have supporting documents and in this supporting documents even within important folder the most important document is schedule the questionnaire of the survey and you need to have the questionnaire with you and this questionnaire means I, I said data is uh, divided into nine blocks. So what are the each block? Um, uh, uh, what does each block talk about? Block three talks about this household characteristics. Within that household characteristics, what are the variables available? Household size, then principal industry the status of the household, principal occupation status, household type, then religion, religion code. 
it is mentioned. But where will I get the code? Just below the table or in the next page they provide. So here for religion, the, the codes are for Hinduism 1, Islam uh, 2, Christianity 3, Sikhism 4, Jain 5, Buddhism is like that. So codes are there. Social groups, that's the code, the variable 6 in that, uh, that block uh, 3. So social group, the codes are given here. That schedule tribe one, schedule class two, other backward classes three, and others nine. So likewise, I have nine blocks. Every block has a, a number of questions. Every questions are quantified in terms of code. Is that if it is a code one or two, like sex, it is written here itself, male, female, but it has many codes, then codes are given either in the previous page or in the Any questions? So, no problem. No problem. Okay. So uh, the codes are given the, the below of the table or previous page or the next page. So for every uh, the, the, the questions, you will get the specification of the code in the questionnaire itself. So you need to have the, it, this questionnaire in your hand to use NSSO data. Because uh, once you are with the data file, data file looks like OSINT. It's a huge data file, but you have a questionnaire. What is that variable? And what is the code? There you will get nine, two, three, five for one, one in you. What the nine means? What that one means? You will get that specific code here. So uh, the, you are clear about the supporting documents also. Let me move to the data itself. You remember I had chosen data only four blocks of that particular file. So in SPSS format. So after extraction of this data, so these four blocks are available. Block three yeah, is visible. Block three, block four, block five point one, and block five point two. Visible, visible, visible. Fantastic. So let me open this block three itself. Block three. So here I have a block three is about household characteristics and block four is about demographic particulars. Okay. So now you concentrate one thing and you have to remember these things uh, 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 this, uh, in, uh, throughout your life to use any large data sets. So block three is about household characteristics. For example, a household belongs to uh, the Hindu community and within Hindu community, they belong to schedule caste uh, community. Fantastic. But every member belonging to this household have the same characteristics. But when it comes to this demographic particulars, if five members are there, in one household, their ages are different. Five members have different age. Their education levels are different. So their marital status might be different. They were, uh, the, the gender might be different. Few will be male, few will be female. So likewise, so household characteristics provide the data related to the household. And if I have, for example, one lakh household in the uh, data file, and on an average, five individual belongs to every household. Then my individual data file, individual member of the data file will be five lakh. No. So household characteristics data file include only one lakh individual. Whereas my individual data file include the data file for five lakh individual. Because they are one lakh household but five lakh individual are living in one lakh household. But I have to merge a data file because I have to run a regression or I have to run a cross tabulation where I have one variable in household characteristics and one or two variable in demographic file particular. So unless I merge these two data file, I won't be able to use the data at all. So first I have to learn the, that, learn the technique how to merge the data file, how to merge the data file. So here, uh, the, let me uh, share one uh, SPSS file.
again some problem it is so in network, sir, network problem or yeah. if, if okay. it is so you can uh, mute your video and uh, do that mute your video it and do it's not network case. problem video uh, because here i have a very good possibly it it happens when i uh, go to this but but yeah waiting to program to respond Delegates, there are some technical issues. Just wait. Sir, your uh, audio is off. Can you please on? Is, is SPSS file visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's visible now. Uh, SPSS file is visible now. That household characteristics dot SFE the data file. Yes, sir. It is visible. Fantastic. Okay, now you see we have this so many uh, the variables in the data file that block three household characteristics. I said I have to merge this data file with the demographic particulars. And here you see this the length of this this uh, this uh, data file is something about uh, one lakh one lakh nine hundred fifty seven. You just note it down. Its size is one lakh nine hundred fifty-seven. I am not opening because of this technical. Uh, the problem is getting created. The other data file. What I will do? I am telling you the other data file length is something around four lakh fifty-nine thousand. Why? I said that one lakh household I have in the data file, but on an average, some four and a half individuals are staying. So I have some four lakh fifty-nine thousand data file for demographic particulars so now i have to merge this data file with that demographic particular here i have variable up to this weight ssr so my variable will be added after weight ssr because those age of the individual and all those variables are not there and my data file is present data file length is 1,997. So it has to be expanded to four lakh. So, what? How it expands? That one characteristics. For example, religion. That if the household belongs to this religion Hindu and four household members are there, this data file gets repeated four times. One, two, three, four, and all four times just besides the four individuals' informations are there in the data file of demographic particular. So this data file will be repeated. It will ge be generated if the, based on the number of members staying in that particular household. So I have to expand the size of this, this data file to merge with the other data file. So here, how to merge? Here, two uh, uh, these steps are there. First, you have to click to this data. After data, you have to click to the sort cases. And in sort cases, I have to identify one key variable. Based on that, the two data files will be merged. I have one data, one folder, uh, yeah, one uh, variable called HHID. That is the identification of the household. 
so that at least some identification has to be there between two data files no so this identification of the household is a common variable i am asking to make it in ascending order this data file that hhid so household unique identification code this ascending order hhid is in ascending order fantastic what is my next step i have to go to this merge file and here i have two uh, options add cases and add variable can anyone tell me which option i have to choose either add case or add variable anyone the add variable fantastic because here i have a number of variable i am going to have few more variable from the um, from the other data um, from the other data file so here i have to do add variable add cases means for example i had few states and other few states are there for the same variable i have to merge that add cases but here our purpose is add variable so i have clicked on this add variable i got this window an external file so this this is my internal file then which is already open that household characteristics so now i am going to click on my external file external file is already there in that in the same folder that kerala university presentation this one spss file fantastic so block 4 is my external file here i am clicking here open clicking to continue fantastic here the option this window is exceedingly important for data matching so match cases on key variable in a sorted file what is my key variable mr devi posat sir hhni HHID, HHID. Yes, sir. HHID. HHID. I have created that is as my key variable. But I have clicked there also. But I have three options here. Both files provide cases. Non active data set is key table. Active data set is key table. Here, which option should I click? Mr. Devi Posa. Can you tell me which option? Her. Yes, I have to provide the third one. Active data set is, uh, I think so, sir. I have uh, why, 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 why? Because I have uh, because the data set I have open is now active. So I think that will uh, add that uh, merging that it will add that variable to that. Yes, you are partial. Your answer is correct, but your explanation is partially correct. Let me tell you, three options are there. Both file provide cases. It is if I expand uh, expand the, the statement, it is it literally means both file provide equal number of cases. But it is not the case here. I have one household file which has only one lakh data set, the one lakh cases, one lakh nine hundred ninety seven. I have another data file which is individual member data file which has some 459000 so both file do not have equal number of cases so yes. had i already created the individual file and wanted to merge with another individual file i would have to link with that both the file provide cases for example i want to merge one household file with another household file or one individual file with another individual file but here i have to merge one household file with another individual file now i have two left out options one is non active data set another is active data set and key table these two are the active and key these two are the key uh, words here active means as dr the dr devi posad mentioned the file is open that is your internal file that is the active file and key table means the sorter table. I am asking my household file to get expanded because one lakh cases needs to be expanded to four lakh, four and a half lakh, four lakh fifty nine thousand cases. 
it has to be merged with my individual members. So this is the key table. Had I opened the other file, the demographic particulars, and wanted to merge with this household characteristics block three, then I would have to link that non-active data set is the key table. Because this household, the sorter file, the file I want to expand is always a key table. But in this case, my key table is open. Had I opened the demographic profile and wanted to merge with household characteristics, that time my key file would have been non-active. The other file would have been active. But here I have this active data set is a key table. I think up to this point, it is clear. So here you have to click. So key variable will detect as HHID. And now you have to click OK. So one warning will come. Key match will fail if data are not sorted in ascending order of key variables. But we have arranged it in ascending order. First, we have sorted it. So we should not be bothered about this this message now you see the magic i have merged i had my last variable weight after weight you see one variable came person serial number relation to head sex age marital status and then they are marital status then general education or technical education to every individuals are uh, the added and my previous all informations of household level characteristics, their religion, their social groups, these are also there. You see the religion, the social groups, these are also there. Now I had shown my earlier data file was only 1,997. I said my other data file is 459,000. After merging, this data file should be converted to 4,59,000 data, uh, data sets. You see, exactly it is 4,59,784. Uh, so uh, it, the, my uh, file, household file has been expanded and was adjusted, was merged with my individual member data file. Those file has only demographic characteristics fantastic so let me save this uh, the file here itself fantastic so Sir, here we, we have to define the variables also in variable view we have to define the codes uh, codes also codes uh, in raw data sometimes codes are given in most of the cases codes are given okay so okay. That, that yeah you don't have to define you, you, if codes are not given, then in level you can specify the code. But in most of the cases, code that they mention the religion code, this thing, that thing. If I uh, click these things, uh, uh, because uh, most of the cases they, they provide uh, provide the code. Sometimes it is missing, and based on the questionnaire, you can write in the level. Otherwise, still you can conduct analysis. To come uh, in, 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 in so uh, we have merged these two data file we have saved this data file also but here do we have any employment characteristics you see we do not have technical education then status of current attendance then type of educational institution then whether they are registered with employment exchange then vocational training field of training now you can recall i have group them the data into different age cohorts. I have uh, the compared with education, general educational level, I have educational level here. I have compared with technical education. I have compared with vocational training, every information I have. I have compared with employment exchange registration also. I have the data, but where is my employment data? That employment data is in another block and that block is my 5.1, the next block. Now I have already uh, the, uh, merged this file household and demographic. So this combined file has become individual data file, individual members. And employment also vary across different members within the household. 
So that is also individual file. So now I am going to merge this data file with that employment data file. So here again the same procedure the data sort cases. Sort cases, which is my uh, now key variable? P1. Anyone? Anyway, let me tell you that earlier we have used household characteristics as unique variable, as our this common variable for margin. Because one file had household characteristics only, other file was individual member, but they had household characteristics as well as individual member characteristics. But in both the file, I had only household characteristics because in household characteristics, I did not have individual members identification code. So household member, uh, house HHID, that household identification code was treated as, uh, as a common variable. But now I have two files, both are individual member file. But within a household, different individuals are there. Still, if I uh, use HHID, that household identification code, package will be confused that uh, member one in same household will be merged with member two of the same household. Some confusion will be there. So each member, each individual has some identification code here because both the data file is individual member data file. So I have household member unique identification code. Now that will be used as a common variable. And at the same procedure, I have to click the sort cases in ascending order. So that variable is known as PID, person identification code. The, the larger version is unique identification code for unique household member unique identification code. So PID is now our common variable. Uh, but earlier HHID was our common variable. Now we have to go to this. We have done sorted. Now merging, merge file. Again, we have to click on the add variables because we want to merge few more variables. So an external SPSS data file, we have to click. So 5.1, that principal activity particulars of household member, usual principal activity particular. So we have to click on that file. So we have to continue and ask it. So now, uh, which one is our common variable? March key variable? Anyone? Dr. Bikram Singh? The PID. PID is the key. PID variable. is my common variable. Fantastic. Yes. So I have PID here. Now you tell me, sir, which option should I click? I have three options. Both file provide cases. Non-active data set is key table. Active data set is key table. Which option should I choose for this margin? So I think first one, both the both this provide cases. I think why? Because both the file have the same number of uh, same number of cases. Exactly, uh, for... exactly not exactly, exactly. So uh, earlier I had the household and. I had to merge household with individual. Now I have individual and I have to merge with another individual characteristics only. So number of cases are 4,59,000 only in both the files. So both files provide equal number of cases. Both files provide cases. So let me click on the key variable. Let me click on OK. Then the message will come. Key match will fail if data are not sorted in ascending order of key variable. So let me click on OK. Since we have already sorted that PID variable before going to this. See, after merging, after PID, what appears? Usual principal status, usual principal activity of the based on NIC 2004, then usual principal activity NCO code, that is occupation code, that is industry code, and then whether they are in any subsidiary activities or not, and then uh, the location of the enterprise, where the workplace, where they are working, then the enterprise, where they are working, all the features of the enterprise, these things. So there, some kind of work profile I got here itself. So I have household features, I have demographic particulars, 
I have there a kind of work profile, but only principal status based on principal status. I have another file subsidiary status. If I want to merge, I have to follow the same procedure because they are also the both file provide cases. I have to merge. And again, so is with my uh, weekly status data also. So I have to, once I have individual member, all other files are individual member data file only. I have to merge and I have to create the merge file. So I believe and then I have to save it. Testing. I believe this up to this point, it is clear. You will be able to merge the data file. Next is I started stating that the great advantage of using NSSO data is NSSO comes up with a variable called multiplier. And that multiplier can be used as a way to come up with parameters, the population characteristics. Although I have this sample characteristics, but using this sample characteristics, I can come up with population characteristics because using this weight. How that weight makes a difference, let me uh, explain you in very simple manner. That let me take frequency of any variable, one variable, because you are very smart enough, you will come to know if I give one very small uh, example that here uh, let me take this social group social group okay is it visible this this uh, file this frequency the results yes, <laughs> fantastic you see that uh, my 4,59,784 sample is divided like this and only 1% belongs to this 0, 1, 2, 3. We have to see 0 means it's a missing cases. They did not report anything uh, about this, this uh, their status. But 1, 2, 3, 9, we have to see the questionnaire. What is that? I'm, uh, and if I check that one, two, three, four, nine, what is uh, the questionnaire? Let me quickly uh, check. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, arbitrarily, we can assume, for example, if one is ST, two is SC, three is uh, OBC, and nine is general. So ST, SC, OBC, and general. So this is the distribution of my sample. So now let me introduce weight. The sample size, it will change the sample size and it will change the distribution also. How to use that weight cases? Weight cases here, data and then weight cases. And here weight cases by, I have to use, they create one weight. Now you see weight by weight, and here also, if you see, go just below, right, right side below of this, down of this uh, SPSS window, you will see weight on. Can you see that weight on notification? It is weight on. So here, then uh, the same uh, analysis, that frequency I am going to uh, do. So here you see, when I have done per sample, the total sample was 4,59,784. And you see the total sample has become 1.e to the power 9. That means 9 digit after 1. So it is at some close. And the distribution you see, even for the, that example 1, you see 1, for example, ST. How many are there? In sample, this many. And then it, after using weight, this has expanded escalated to this figure. Now you see the distribution. You see that my category one was 13.2 percent. Here the category one represents only 8.7 percent. Category two was uh, 16 percent. You see after using weight, the category becomes category two becomes 19.9 percent. So, so this weight makes the difference it gives the weight for particular because this sampling and their importance it differs across different regions different sample wise so they, they create 
a multiplier based on a scientific technique. So using weight, we get the parameter based on the entire population. But there is little bit differences in the NSSO population and census population that we adjust taking ratio if you are interested. As long as you are dealing with percentage figure, so you can go ahead. But if you are dealing with the frequency of the number of uh, the, the, the representative cases, then you can adjust with the uh, census population because we have seen in our uh, uh, over the years that there is marginal uh, differences between this NSSO population and census population. So now you know the March cases and weight cases. So another uh, very quick things I will add uh, two uh, things in, in five to seven minutes I will show that select cases. When do I need uh, that uh, select case? For example, my analysis here, I have this one, two, three, uh, nine. For one represents this um, ST2, SC3, OBC, and nine general. I want to see a difference between forward cast, for example, this uh, three and nine, OBC, and uh, general I am putting together, and I am putting this one and two. Uh, together this uh, the backward cast so backward vis-a-vis -vis forward cast so here from here you can do analysis but if you want to run regression or if you want to create a variable then you have to some way you have to do the, the little bit exercise with the data for example my purpose is to do only analysis related to SCSP at one and two I am not going to do analysis related to three and nine. One and two. Either I can do here, in here I can go, I can do that select case and select case here, big data select case, and here I have my social group. Condition satisfied. What is that condition? This condition is. Social group uh, equals to either one or social group equals to two. Fantastic. Now I am asking you select it. If you want to create this is one separate file, you have to click here. Click here that output delete unselected cases. Then all general, um, all forward cast will be general and OBC will be deleted. But you can copy the selected file to a new data set and this file will remain as it is or you can have analysis only the selected cases based on even in within this analysis so just they, that will filter out that will not delete anything will not add anything it will just filter out so let me do with this filtering of this data you can see the cross uh, in in right hand uh, yeah in the in the in the left hand side and you can Compared with the with the uh, release with the social group, you see the social group three. It is striked out. That means it is not included in the sample. You see when it is one, it is it did not strike out. So once you do the analysis, you will get that. that uh, now let me of this weight because weight. You already understood weight. So here. Let me conduct the same uh, frequency analysis for social groups. So I got it. You see, it is not reporting any more three, four. It now my analysis only based on the social group one and two. So you can have your entire regression analysis. You can have your uh, uh, specific purpose. For example, this is very simple example. Sometimes we are concerned only with the self-employed people. I have given example of my second paper that how credit influence self-employment businesses. So I have to select only self-employed. Wage employment, regular wage, casual wage, unemployed, or they are not my concern. So here I had to select only those who are with that self-employed that code I have given and data was only reflecting the self-employed people. So you know now merging of the uh, cases, you know uh, weight case, you know select case. My last uh, exercise I am going to show you recoding of the variable. For example, no, you uh, now once you selected now I want to have the entire data file. So here I am. All cases again. I am now removing the selection. 
So now you see the strikes uh, all 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 has gone. So uh, I have the entire data sets. Now I have uh, this one. Uh, uh, yeah, here you have to click this transform and then you know the how to compute. But here a recording of the same variable. You know how to record because that is very basics of this SPSS. Still, I am going to show what record uh, I am uh, going to do here. My new uh, Social group, I want to record. So, so shall I understand? So we can have a five five more minutes, and we can have a discussion after that. And, uh, Fantastic! I will take two minutes only. No problem yeah. with you. Yeah. So what I said one, I I am giving one also value one, and add and two also means st also one and sc also one. I am clubbing them together. And all other values I am giving zero because I want to create one binary variable that uh, one zero variable so add zero so continue okay fantastic so here i have one record in the same variable let me let me check it analyze descriptive frequency social group you see now the variable has become only zero one one represents that uh, the together one lakh thirty four thousand four hundred ninety seven and zero represents my forward uh, cast. So you know the recording, you know weight cases, select cases, and margin. So at least basics of NSSO data you know, and then if you know statistics and econometrics, you can uh, do the analysis. Last point, what I want to mention you that sometimes we face difficulty related to that HHID and PID that household identification code and uh, that individual identification code these two are um, extremely important uh, without these two variables you cannot merge your data file but sometimes these variables are not available are not available sometimes it is missing in 68 round employment unemployment data in one file hhid was missing so in that case what will you do you have to i don't have time otherwise i would have shown that you have some uh, the key variable in your uh, data file and based on that key variable you have to um, just merge those key variables and you can create that hhid and pid mostly it includes your fsu number it includes your uh, second stage datum hamlet and uh, this household number it's very simple that you are staying in a, a state within state you are staying in a district within district you are staying in a block and within that block a village and your household number and once you are done with hhid then hhid uh, uh, you add with your uh, you merge with your individual identification code you will get your individual household member identification variable so these two variables are exceedingly important to merge the data files so dr bijo i am done okay so participant uh, please uh, unmute your mic and ask questions if you can okay. uh, so we have got some questions which have been privately sent to the host so i'll just read them one by one are you okay with that sir fantastic you go ahead Okay, so the first question is from Priyanka. Can you please explain how we can get free data set from MOSPI? Because unless and until we have the data file, how can we we'll have a hands on training? Although I have tried to download, but unable to find it on the site. Yeah, no, uh, this MOSPI uh, has uh, started providing this unit level data file very recently because I have downloaded one data file related to health very recently. So data file is available. So in MOSPI site exactly because unless I saw that it's, it's I, I have to check it. I have downloaded it in MOSPI website. You, you just make a search in Google, you will come to know. But they have not, they are not providing all data files. 
but they are providing some of the data files, but that data file also not in SPSS format or S data format that is coming in notepad format. So you have to that old um, the, the technique we used to do when we were doing PhDs that from uh, in uh, this uh, uh, notepad to uh, text file to SPSS or text file to uh, data that transformation is required and then the all following procedures can be followed. But uh, another uh, suggestions I have given and uh, ICSS are data services. So NASDAQ, they are in the library that is online library. They are providing the extracted data means all individual data. I have shown no that extracted in that block 3, 4, 5.1, 5.2. You will get data in that question, but then merging and uh, your subsequent analysis is your responsibility, but that is available in ICSS or data service library and NASDAQ library. It is free of cost only. I think if you are organization is part, I, I don't know because our is ICSS and institute only. So we had sent our copy scan copy of our um, this identity card. So we became member automatically, but for you, you have to make a query with them that how to get membership. But that is very uh, efficient and useful uh, library. Thank you, sir. Hope Ms. Priyanka is clear with her doubt. We have another question from Mr. Gurpreet Kaur. How we can use and apply statistics on theme data, that is NSSO data, unless we can extract this data? So can you please convey the free source of data to use it? As I tried and unable to download from M MOSPI website. Thank it's you, the same question. Same question. <laughs> sir, yes, sir, it's the same doubt. Same question. Now you, you go ahead with the next question. Uh, okay. Sir, these were the questions that were sent to the um, host privately. So, dear participants, if you have any more questions, please do unmute your mic and you can ask it directly to our resource person. Uh, in Rithi, sir, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you very much, sir. You have explained nicely to handle large data sets. So I deal with probes, but I have never used these data sets. Sometimes, if we need your help, sir, if kind enough, we can uh, contact you. So that, that you drop an email answer. with your specific query, but don't ask no, me to do the analysis. But no, 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 no. have any difficulty, you just send me the, an email, I will reply immediately. Thank you, your kind. Sir, uh, good evening. Uh, sir, good evening. Can, sir, can you suggest some reading on how to handle the control variables in the uh, in the analysis part? Because I am very stuck on the control variable, how to handle that. If you suggest any reading or some research paper, if you have handled how you handle the control variable in uh, analysis. That is, that, is, that, that is a very uh, means important question and all econometricians are struggling what to be the how to specify control variables no the basic thing is from the existing literature only you have to identify control variables because there is no hard and fast rule to to specify control variables and that is the that's why this all endogeneity issues have come omitted variable bias has come and then the, the this this but control means in case if you miss some important variables which influence your uh, one of the endogenous uh, one of the covariate as well as that uh, as well as your ultimate outcome variable you can go ahead with iv based regression technique that to some extent control for your omitted variable bias but part variable you need to include in your regression equation that judgment you have to make based on the existing literature Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, there is one question from Mr. Rajesh. How to produce the regression results at the results shown in your paper? Could you demonstrate it brief briefly using this data set? Did you estimate the regression models using weighted data or unweighted data? Yes. Uh, regression model also we need to estimate. I have estimated with weighted data only. Because uh, to to be risk free, it is better to uh, to estimate with weight only. Sir, sir, I have Mr. a question. Rajesh is clear. Yes, sir. Uh, may I know the frequency in which the NSSO data uh, has been updated? Uh, the frequency of updation of NSSO data. 
Uh, that is that is that was my first slide in in that NSA. So when I introduce NSA, so that some of the data are quinquennial. That in every five years they they update the data file. For example, employment, unemployment, consumer expenditure. But data and investment survey they update in once in ten years. Uh, then some of the surveys uh, also five years. But uh, for example, this uh, uh, unorganized enterprise surveys both in so uh, this. Uh, so if we think so, the uh, when a study conducted and after ten years, uh, the same uh, study we can conduct again. Then there is a contradictory result will come up. Yeah, then, because then, uh, then yeah. So what you do? Uh, yeah, you have so, to. You have to give explanation that why these pictures are different. Because using weight, if you get the figure different, that means in in that ten years time something has happened related to that particular variable. Okay, okay, thank you. Dr. Bino Joy, left or he is there? Bino Joy, Dr. Bino Joy, sir, do you have questions? Uh, so the guy is asking Girish yeah. uh, Kumar. Mr. Girish Kumar, if you have any questions, please do ask it. Otherwise, I think your mic is on. You can please mute your mic. Hello, sir. Hey, hello. Uh, so, uh, yes, sir. I am here, sir, but uh, we are not using this uh, secondary NSSO data. We are always dealing with this primary data. That's why I am not asking any question. Okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you for your wonderful, wonderful presentation, which actually gave you some insight into. So, in future, we will deal with this NSSO data. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hope uh, everyone questions uh, were addressed by Dr. Indrajit. So now uh, uh, we have a, we have learned a skill to a skill for the usage of financial data from uh, Dr. Indrajit. And I would say uh, I have noticed last three months uh, uh, Dr. Indrajit uh, has published paper in EUA Journal and Journal of Applied Research, Journal of Asia Pacific Economy, Journal of Asian Economics, and all, all uh, Taylor and Francis also were journals. Uh, and uh, I, I think uh, last four months, uh, the frequency of publication is uh, from Indrajit is so immense, immense and tremendous. <laughs> <laughs> so, on behalf of the participant, because uh, I think this is a rare skill uh, which which has been exposed by a resource person uh, extraction and use of NSSO data. But uh, I think uh, some uh, this is a paid data, right, sir? Uh, paid data. It is majorly paid data, but some libraries provide at free of cost. And government is also in the process of providing at free of cost, but that is under process. Okay. Uh, so I you? would uh, like I would like to express my sincere thanks to uh, Dr. Indrajit uh, for, for this wonderful session and the wonderful lecture. Oh, we I hope we all benefited from the lecture. Uh, thank you, sir. And uh, we, we we will have official uh, thanks from the our organization. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes. Yeah, we can uh, hear you. Sir, actually, actually, sir, I just want to request if uh, Indaji, sir, if Indaji, sir, has downloaded these files, can they share us on uh, any any pattern in the sense Google Drive or anywhere else? If it is paid and if he has access to that data. Yeah, that the, the data uh, is available uh, publicly and it's a big file. But the other uh, this um, PPT and my publications, my publications also. But I will send it to Dr. Bijo. Is it fine through email? Yes, sir. I can share. I can share with the bots. Fantastic. Fantastic. 
so thank you sir over to the host uh, for the official word of thanks sir thank you for such an engaging session thank you for giving us an insight on nsso and how those data can be used to publish papers it was indeed a blessing to have you with us today sir me bhagya on behalf of the department of commerce extend my sincere gratitude to you thank you sir thanks a lot from my side for giving me this opportunity and thanks to the um, this uh, all uh, organizers and, and specifically this dr bijo av and uh, because he has given all information and uh, appropriate information time to time thanks uh, one and all for your patience and asking for this some of the interesting questions thank you thank you thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you all. That's an end for today's session. And tomorrow we are having a conference from the morning, from nine o'clock to the evening, five o'clock. I request all the participants to join exactly by nine o'clock. And if you have any uh, queries, please do contact the regarding track. The tracks have been allotted to representatives. Please do contact them. So thank you. And there is a feedback form which will be sent to you at the end of every session. Please do fill it. Thank you.